folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Thursday, November 7th, 2024. There was a magnitude 2.6 earthquake 127 kilometers west of Yachets, Oregon at 6.17 a.m. or which is about 78, almost 79 miles. Now Yachets and the entire Oregon coast is about 100 miles from the Cascadia subduction zone. So this earthquake would have been in the area of the Cascadia subduction zone. It is a about a 600 mile fault that runs from Northern California to British Columbia. Originally, they said that this section of the Cascadia subduction zone was locked. And that was said many years ago because there wasn't, you know, really any um, earthquakes occurring in that location. But now they have started. While the portion of the fault, the Cascadia subduction zone extending from near Vancouver Island, southwest coastline, may be the most likely area to host, you know, the largest earthquakes. Um, this area south along Oregon's coast may be more likely to experience slightly smaller and more frequent tremors. In the last 10,000 years, 19, 19 quakes greater than a magnitude 9 have rocked the Cascade. Uh, the most recent, a magnitude 9 that struck in 1700, made whole islands disappear. It sunk coastal forests into the tidal zone and uh, formed tsunami waves that actually reached as far as Japan. Let me go back in here. We got recently, there's been um, two large earthquakes, one along the Blanc Blanco fracture zone. Now, this fracture zone has a total length of 350 kilometers or 217 miles. Recently, there's been a 5.0. That was October 18th. And what that earthquake did was relieve strength, um, tension along the fault so that more earthquakes can occur, um, probably going north. There was also recently um, a 6.0. That one was interesting, too. That was on October 30th. All these earthquakes, what they indicate was the release of tension for the Juan de Fuca fault zone, which is up over here. This is the Juan de Fuca fault zone. The release of pressure is what they are expecting to happen when they have what they call the big one along the Cascadia subduction zone. So these earthquakes here are really relieving pressure that could cause a destabil destabilization of the entire Pacific Northwest. What many people probably don't realize um, that the Cascadia subduction zone is divided up into different sections. Here we got the Juan de Fuca section and then up over here we have the Explorer plate and then we got the Gorda plate and all these different locations they could actually have a large earthquake that doesn't rupture the entire Cascadia subduction zone, but just those sections there. And while this area here for the Juan de Fuca um, hasn't had anything major, um, but they do have a lot of the smaller earthquakes. And many of those could be very destructive. An example down here by the Gorda Plate when they had ruptures. Um, yeah, there was a lot of damage. How many of you remember the earthquake that struck Ferndale? Yeah, in 2022, there was one death. Um, bridges were taken out. The one death was caused by a heart attack. And because of the infrastructure, the bridge was taken out. Emergency services couldn't reach that person in time. Now, the um, Blanco Fracture Zone, yeah, that is one of the most active faults within um, this location and down over here is also a spreading center um, it's spreading because of magma coming into the system not a lot um, the eastern portion of the Blanco fracture zone has less magma 
and less spreading than say it does up over here by the west. So it's interesting we're now getting earthquakes along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone in an area that they originally said was locked. Being locked it would build up pressure and now they know that um, these earthquakes here are also um, could be a very big trigger for a larger earthquake anywhere along the Cascadia subduction zone. They're hoping that um, the next one will just be a um, a large one but not one that would rupture the entire sections of the Cascadia um, subduction zone like it did in 1700. Many of you have noticed that the earthquakes are increasing around the world and any earthquake does have a 10% chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. So are you prepared for a large earthquake and tsunami? Yeah, I got over here um, different schools that have evacuation plans to go straight up because they know if there's a large earthquake, uh, they wouldn't have a chance to get to higher ground in time. Yeah, you think of the children in schools. Yeah, God help them if there is a large earthquake. But are you prepared? Do you have um, a plan? What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please share. Make sure you're still subscribed. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.